I think one is entertainment. I mean, bottom yeah. line, this is just yeah. an entertaining story. Uh, we've got a guy, and uh, he, he is anti-establishment, as Mike said, but he's also absolutely, I mean, he beats up the, the, the monk. Yeah. It's, it's not, you know, um, Friar Tuck. I mean, he actually beats him up. Yeah, he, uh, the sheriff he kills. So, you know, we've got, uh, we've, we've got a viol- I mean, it's, it, it's violence and it's action-packed and everything else. No, no women, right? Not in the uh, 15th century. Not in the original years, stuff. Yeah. And and it's and it's something that, that different people see different things in it. And this is one of these things about how these legends right. move. Same thing happens with Arthur. Is people, it becomes big because people interpret it in new new ways and for new purposes and, and kind of reconfiguring it. And certainly the idea of, of the green wood itself, the mystery of the forest. Yeah. Um, you know, and the and the, the dangers and the threats that that, that holds. And here's this figure in there that you can tell stories about, and who comes out of the greenwood and moves back into it. Um, that just is intrinsically, I think, interesting to people. Sure, it's just fascinating. And the fact that he's running below the law. Yeah, you know that he's he's been outlawed. We're never told what he's outlawed for. Not in those original legends. We don't know. I've always kind of thought of him in historical terms as maybe a, a soldier who's, you know, in a, in a downtime. <laughs> Gotta do something. Gotta yeah. do something. Okay. And that's what keeps p- people busy with the legend. <clears throat> it's not just the original legend or how or what how what is the original legend because we've got very few things we can date to specifically the the middle ages, let's say. And then it, but then it changes all the way through. I mean, there's the addition of a woman, Maid Marian, that comes in the 16th century. But then there's also a nobility that is given to Robin Hood sometime in the 16th century. Uh, by the 20th century, you know, we've got got him as the man who robs for the rich and gives to the poor. But he's also the man who now is fighting uh, King John uh, before on behalf of Richard, which no nowhere in the original legend. So. Well, it's interesting to see to looking at it in the in the uh, last configurations and various things. It's uh, you know we just watched what Princess of Thieves, where Robin Hood's daughter is now a part of it, and this isn't the first time that's happened. That would happen in the in the fifties uh, with a couple of movies where Robin Hood's daughter now uh, Robin Hood gets too old, so now his daughter so has a son coming in. Uh, so there's a, a more of a gender, exclu- uh, in, uh, you know, gender inclusivity, uh, where um, now we can have a woman who acts as an outlaw. Uh, Maid Marian in the earlier um, legends and in the earlier films is much more the docile, stay-at-home woman type. Uh, and of course, in the New Crow movie, you know, Maid Marian becomes that yeah really martial figure. Uh, which is really, really, really staggering. And very different, very different even yeah. from the Princess Robin Hood, or the uh, Princess of Thieves, the, the notion of Robin Hood fighting, because she's the Robin right. Hood ruling. Right, right. It's a, it's a fascinating change. Yeah. So I mean, I think it's, it's applicable in so much as people can give it applicability. I mean, you yeah. know, the Crow movie, you know, suddenly is, is going just head over heels for this kind of freedom aspect of Robin Hood, you know, that he's... Mm-hmm. Same as William Wallace and everything else. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. Every, every time I, mm-hmm. I think of that Crow movie, I actually think of Mel Gibson as William Wallace as he's dying, you know, freedom. Yeah, you know, sure. that, yeah which would have no concept. Which though. no concept. I mean, it's total yeah, nonsense. Yeah, you know. well, is that, uh, is but that play is good to an American audience. I mean, when he died in 1305, freedom was a, you know, nobody would have known the word. Right. So. Right. I mean, okay. he's that real man. Well, now we've got a false one who's in the 20th century getting formed into a free free character. I mean, there's no doubt in 1938 that Robin Hood, legitimization of Robin Hood, well, who's he fighting against? He's fighting against the English king. That couldn't have been made two years later. In 1940, right. the English king is now the good guy. So you've got to support him. 